Hey, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm, are, are we in Seattle? Um, last I checked, we were in San Francisco, but it was raining this morning, so it could be Seattle. This hmm. looks kind of like Seattle. This is weird. There's like a uh, there's there's like some paint stuff going on. There's a picture of what I assume is Mount Rainier, and then a is space that, needle. Is that a photograph? It looks like a photograph in photograph the back of here. Clouds and or mountains. Bryce. It, it's some type of. Whoa! Malgo. Wait, I know this is the Windows 8 login screen. Ah, login. That's why it's showing us the time, date, and uh, battery the status. Connection. Yeah. Um, so Windows 8 login screen, couple of things that are new here. First, you can change this background to be whatever you want. This is mm -hmm. the default one that Microsoft ships. You can change it to any picture, basically, that you have on your computer. Seattle is Tatooine. We have two sons. Two sons. That one son is blobby and weird shaped. Yeah. Um, it also shows information of, amb of an ambient nature. So uh, if you have email and calendar set up, yes. uh, your current appointments and new emails, and how many new messages you have. It's just new messages. There's a, you can put a couple that show a small amount of information, then you can put one that shows extensive information. For example, the calendar can say your next t uh, uh, meeting is blah, blah, blah at, at 10.30. No. I'm going to go ahead and log in now. OK. A couple of different login mechanisms here. Uh, the default is the age-old password. OK. And uh, to clarify, we're using this on a laptop right now. Uh, Windows 8 works on laptops, desktops, and tablets. It is truly a jack of all trades. And uh, for example, on that login screen, you would just swipe up with your finger to on, on a tablet to get into the login screen. Yes. And then use you know, a pin code, a password, or even uh, a photo, uh, tapping points on a photo. Yeah, the tapping points on a photo you can do with a mouse and keyboard, it does not work particularly well. Mm. Um, so this is the new start screen. I have, as you can see, uh, changed from the custom template to something not custom. I'm going to change that right now by using the settings control panel. Mm. So this is as good a place as, as any to start. So when you get into Windows, no matter where you turned off, where you were last, it's going to throw you into the start screen, which is a replacement for the start menu. Yes. Because Microsoft really, really wants you to at least give start screen a try. So well, you don't have a choice, really, because the start screen is taking over all of the tasks or many of the tasks previously handled by the start menu. Um, as you can see, you can go to a traditional desktop. I'll go over there. You can see this. It's not playing my wallpaper for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but this is just a normal desktop with shortcuts. You can pin stuff to the taskbar. It has a tray. But you'll notice there is no start menu. No start button. Yep. Um, to get back to the start menu, this is, this is, there's a few things that are really weird about Windows 8 for normal PC users, right? Let's, let's start with the start menu, and then we'll talk about the desktop stuff in a little bit. So here is, this is the start screen. Mm -hmm. um, it replaces you, the start menu. It replaces the start menu. There's no, if you go, I'm going to go back to the desktop and show you, there's literally no start button here. You move your mouse in the lower corner, and that takes you back to the start screen if you want. The way most people, I think, will hit, get this is by hitting the start, start key on their keyboard, the Windows key on their keyboard, or alternately, the Windows key on the face of their tablet. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's not just a list of, applications or control panels or any of that stuff. Which is what the start menu did in all the way back from Windows 5 Previously. to Windows 7. Yeah. The start menu had a list of your applications and files and shortcuts. It had a list of your frequently, most frequently used applications as well, which I found in pretty useful over yes. the long term. Um, so what the, each of these tiles represents an application, and they are live updating tiles, just like in Windows Phone 7. So for example, this is the People tab, and it's showing me replies to a Twitter message that I posted a few hours ago, right? Uh, this is finance, I think. It's showing stock tips and things like that. They're, they're all here. Like, there's all the normal kind of phone and tablet apps that you would expect to see. And these are all pop the ones here. you've listed so far are the ones bundled with Windows 8, native first party, modern style applications uh, built for the start screen. Yes. So, the first, this whole pane here, and then a couple of three things over here, four things over here are all defaults. Um, now, you, of course, you can reorder these as you may want. So, you know, if you use Chrome all the time, you might want to put Chrome here and move SkyDrive over here to the right. It's not a value judgment. It's just something you can do. And it's a vertical, it's a horizontal scroll rather than vertical. So I'm moving my mouse wheel to go right and left. That moves the, you know, it, it's fairly self-explanatory. Or you can drag the scroll bar on the bottom. And if you're a tablet, of course, you can just hold your finger on and, and In theory, and the, tablet, the, the tablet or the, if you're using a trackpad on a laptop, it has to support it. This laptop that I'm using doesn't have appropriate drivers and can't scroll back and forth. So that's something you'll definitely want to find out before you install this on your on your laptop. Because if it, the if the drivers aren't updated to work, it is going to be virtually unusable if you can't do two finger scroll. Um, okay, so what should we let's let's jump into the apps here. Uh, first, what do you want to look at first, Norm? 
We can look at whatever whatever is demonstrative of what Windows 8 does. Okay, so this is the this is the weather app. Okay. When I click on this, it jumps off into the pane and it shows me a hourly forecast for where it thinks I am. It thinks I'm in Pacifica. I don't know why it would think that, but it thinks I'm in Pacifica. So what does this demonstrate about Windows 8 um, that's different from Windows 7 in terms of a modern style app? Uh, well, there's, it's full screen. Okay. This is the big thing to notice, mm -hmm. is the start menu and the apps are all full screen. You can do a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of clicking and dragging to make them partial screens. I can never remember how to do that on the uh, on, on like just by default. They don't ever explain it particularly well. I think you drag and, and you put one here and it makes a like kind of partial two-thirds screen, one-third screen. It's this is always the second window is always 320 pixels wide, 360 pixels wide, and then the rest of the display fills up with this. So that's multitasking within modern style. That's on tablet the, multitasking, yeah. And which you can also do on the laptop or desktop. You can also do it with the desktop. Uh, with any with any computer that's uh, connected to this, so I can make the desktop a partial pane here, and you do that by opening up the task switcher, dragging it over, and then you can change it so that the desktop is. Wait, that didn't work, right? Let's try it again. It's somewhat hard to grab these things. There we go. So there's a, a partial desktop, not terribly useful. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the start menu. Other things to note about uh, start menu. Right click, the context menu is gone. So normally on a desktop, on, on the desktop, yes. if you right click any icon, any file, you get, you get a menu that you this can ask for properties and you can you know, um, open certain files of different programs, yeah, you, you can, can run files of administrators. Screen, whatever. Exactly. That Hardcore is, computer stuff. Yes. That is not available on, uh, in the start screen. Yeah, so so for I, modern style applications, what happens when you right click? These used to be called metro style, just we should make that mm -hmm. clear. Microsoft has some naming issues, so they're calling them modern style now. What is, we're calling modern is what we used to call metro. So what happens when you right click this an little This menu pops up at the bottom. And that is the substitute for the right click menu. It is the context aware menu. Uh, you can select multiple things that way. Basically, the main options here are things like pin to the, to the uh, task bar, pin to the start menu, um, sometimes you can turn off live updating of the tiles, like this one has, I, I can turn this off so it doesn't do stock tips. What happens if it's a file tips. instead of application that you've pinned to the start screen? Uh, that is a really good question, Norm. Let's find out and see. Um, you mean from inside an app, perhaps? Or uh, can you pin a file to the start screen? Um, like a photograph? No, I don't believe that you can. One oh. selected, no, I can do this. Um, let's search for something. Files, uh, JPG. And there goes. No indexing. files matches my search. So okay. what you demonstrated there is also searching uh, in the start menu on uh, the, before Windows 8. If you open the start menu by hitting the Windows key, you can just start typing anything and start searching. Yeah. In Windows 8, if you want to search for applications or files or anything. Again, you have to hit your, the you have to be in the start screen, and then you can just start typing and anywhere it will start in the start the screen. Search. Yeah, and this is this is so. There's another alternate way to launch search. You pull up these things on the right side called charms. Uh, on a tablet, you would swipe in from the left side of the screen or a trackpad, uh, assuming it has the appropriate drivers. If you have a mouse and keyboard, you just move your mouse to the upper and lower right corners or lower right corners let's of the screen. Go through the charms. Show search. what the charms do. Um, so there's a hold on. Before we get to that that far, let's, there's a couple of things that are weird about this. The only place they introduce this move the mouse to the corner and click thing is in a, a video that plays when they start the user account creation. So if you miss that, you're completely boned. You're never going to find out about these charms, and this is going to be a really hard OS to use. Um, the way search, the way the charms work is you go to the bottom right, doing it. You click the thing you want, and then you just type, start typing. So I did search. It defaults to apps. Uh, it blocks out the, the different search parameters by either apps that are installed in the system, like, say, character or map. Uh, settings. There we go. Or files. So this should theoretically be anything in your indexed locations on the hard drive that matches the search string you type in. I find that the file search still doesn't work particularly well. The, the app and control panel settings do. I don't know why the delineation is necessary there for search. Um, search is one of the useful charms, though, so that's a good thing. There are two or three charms that are completely useless right now, mm, depending on how you look at it. Um, so the start button, totally useless, because you're much faster to move to the lower left-hand corner 
or alternately to press the start button on the front of your tablet or on your keyboard. Um, I assume that this is there for pure touch devices. Mm -hmm. Because the way to pull up the charms is again, if you're holding a tablet in a landscape position, just swipe in from the right. Right, and, and you hit it with your thumb. Mm -hmm. However, you're still better off hitting the physical button on the front of the device, most likely. Um, devices, totally useless. Uh, this is theoretically where you would send video or prints or stuff like that if you had devices connected. To printers or a second monitor or an Xbox. Yeah. Um, the Xbox doesn't work right now. I don't know that any of the printers I've, none of the printers I've tried have worked right with this. Uh, part of it's because there's no Windows 8 drivers yet, so we'll know that further on. I think you're always better off using a print menu, and I don't really see people doing a lot of printing from Metro, modern style apps, sorry. Um, so nothing to do in there right now. Eventually the devices menu has also all sorts of NAS boxes and, and mouse and weird things like that. Um, and then the last one is Share, which theoretically is really, really cool, but because there's no apps in the Microsoft Store right now, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. So Share, if I'm someplace where there's an image that I might want to share, so for example, we'll go to my Flickr account. Um, here is a picture of, this is the Daedalus. This is a human-powered flight thing. It's in the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., outside Washington, D.C. I would like to share this with you, Norman Chan. Mm -hmm. So, because you're in the photo, Windows 8 knows that this is a file, uh, you're looking at a photo. Yeah. And because you're in the Photos app, uh, it has linked with what they call a contract yeah. to tie with other apps to share the contents uh, of the app. So it knows, because this is a photo, there are only two applications on my computer right now that can share with photos. That can share photos. That can share photos. And those are Mail and SkyDrive. If you have more than the list of, of applications that will fit on here, it'll scroll. And it, I've never hit that situation yet because there's not very many apps in the Microsoft Store at this point, the Windows Store. Um, but theoretically, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Path, all that stuff should pop up here. Um, and, and nothing wrong with that. It's a, that. That is actually really cool. It's just not particularly useful right now. Um, the last charm is settings. Settings is really weird because sometimes it's settings for whatever you're looking at. In this case, it's gonna be settings for the Photos app. Um, I can change my account and all that stuff. There's my email address again, that's great. Um, alternately, that takes you to, there's also a little block of like machine specific settings down here at the bottom that shows every time you pop up that settings charm. And that allows you to change things like log on, uh, sorry, shut down, restart, sleep, adjust the brightness on the laptop, change the volume, connect to a different Wi-Fi network, et cetera. Or you can go in here and change PC settings. Wow. Now this is, this would be great, except for these settings are a subset of all the settings on your computer that you'll need to adjust. Well, normally where I would go to control panel. You'd think that control panel and this would duplicate each other perfectly, but they actually don't. Like if I want to adjust mouse uh, uh, sensitivity, I can't do that from inside the settings Metro app. Because this is, this, is, this is gonna be all the settings that would apply if you were using a tablet. So you have to think about what you're gonna use whether this is a tablet setting or a PC setting, when you go look for a setting in, in, in the settings app. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit confusing. Here are all the different devices that I've connected to. There, this is a real super, super small subset of the available settings. For example, I can't even set up, I can't promote an account to be an administrator from in, in here. Like none of that stuff works. You have to do, go to the control panel for that. Um, let's talk about the default apps. There are a handful of things installed. There's news, finance, there's photo viewers, there's video viewers. Uh, none of that stuff is, it's, it's all good, it's full screen, it's very tablet friendly. Can't imagine actually really using it on a full size PC with a real monitor. Um, just because the benefits of multitasking outweigh the attractiveness of the modern style app. Benefits of having, when you say multitasking, you mean actually running applications in resizable windows, yeah. any size on a desktop. So I mean, if I want to look at this photo and drag, do, use it, send it to an email, it's much easier for me to open it in something on the desktop and drag it into the when email. When you're using a keyboard and mouse. When I'm using a keyboard and mouse. It's great that that works on the tablet, but I don't care when I'm using a mouse and keyboard, as I assume the vast majority of people who'll be using Windows 8 are going to use. Uh, I, when I tried the video app, I had some codec issues. I, I'm, we originally were gonna do this at my house where I had access to a whole boatload of videos. So I don't think my demos are gonna work now because they're all on a server far away. Yeah, they aren't. Um, it doesn't obviously play Matryoshka, but it plays MP4 video encoded for uh, iPhone, iPad pretty well. So uh, let's talk about what you just pulled up on the, on the left side of the screen right there. Uh, that is the task switching. A menu. Yeah, this guy right here. This is a, so this is the Metro style task switcher. Uh, there are two task switchers in Windows 8. 
This is the one that you get up when you press Alt Tab, just like normal. And that now shows everything. It used to just show uh, Metro style. It used to just show, sorry, desktop apps. Now it shows Metro apps and desktop apps together, which is quite good. And if you have multiple, if you have uh, multiple desktop apps running, they'll show up as individual entries here as well. So, see with the Chrome and the file browser mm -hmm. up here now. But on, um, uh, if, if you want to do uh, the previously it was the Windows Tab Carousel uh -huh. that is gone, and that is replaced with the Windows t uh, Tab. Uh, this guy right left here. Left sidebar. So this only changes between Metro style apps and the desktop as a whole. So the desktop is treated in this case almost like an app uh, that runs inside Metro, which is a little bit of a weird metaphor. Uh, this is the interface you use if you want to do the two third one third split. So you open something and you drag it to a third of the screen and oh, God, googly moogly. Uh, there we go. So it'll pop up with a third of the screen there. And Microsoft is forcing every developer, when they're developing a modern style application, to have a designed, you know, one third screen, three twenty pixel wide uh, view of their application. Yes, it's part of the split. Uh, it's part of the spec. So, so for someone on the desktop using, for example, try and get, giving Star Screen a fair shake. Mm -hmm. You know, to get new application, it, Windows Eight comes bundled with a few applications. We've looked at those. To Maps get new is ones, great. Maps is great. It's, it's one of the you know, you, previous versions of Windows, you never got Maps. It's something we kind of take for granted now with mobile devices. But to have that on a laptop desktop when you're connected to the internet, it's great. It's very cool. Um, you go to the Windows Store if you want to download new applications. Yes. So the Windows Store is why they're kind of really pushing people to use the start screen. And right now, it's obviously not populated with all the third-party applications. There's nothing that, that costs money at this point. Yes, it's, it's all free. And the ones that are on the store right now, Nothing really jumps out as a, oh my god, this is going to be better than the, the, wind, the des traditional desktop version or web browser. No, none of this stuff is particularly good. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of kind of, it feels like the first weeks of an app store. You know when, you, when iOS launched their app store, Google launched the Play, well, what was then called the Android Marketplace. Um, you know, it takes a while to kind of work through the initial kinks, figure out what the platform's good for and bad for. Right now, the stuff that's in here is, is not very good. And I think a lot of people are probably holding things that they would charge for uh, simply because you know, they want to be able to charge. Right now, you can't charge money on the, on the Windows Store. So. Also, even, even though th these programs, I mean, it seems like the developers are develop designing these programs to be best used on a tablet. Uh, I don't imagine a lot of people on the desktop, on laptops, downloading these apps in lieu of using a, a browser. Yeah, so, for example, like checking weather or for directions or Yelp. Well, so the good example is when you're searching for something. Uh, when, I, when you search for a file, if you use the default one, the default search, the one that, you know, uh, let's see, let's look for uh, Word documents, which isn't going to work. When you go to files and it's doing the index, if you have a lot of space on your machine, it, it will go through and search all the non-index files as well. But what that means is you're stuck at this metro, sorry, modern style window and just waiting for a full screen app to finish running. That's no good. You're much better off going to the desktop uh, and just doing the traditional search. Hey, I'm going to search here for the same thing. And, you know, it, it, it's this way you can put that search in the background. Like not being able to put things in the background and come back to them later is a big detriment when you're on the desktop and used to doing... Uh, you know, doing kind of real computing with your with your machine. So there are a few places that things get kind of weird as a result of this, the Metro, sorry, modern style apps uh, start screen and the desktop uh, as both coexisting on the same machine. For example, there are applications that are doubled up. Yeah. Um, not even third party applications. Internet Explorer exists both as a modern style application designed wholly within HTML5 and yep. also on the desktop. Uh, which normal people traditionally use. So yeah. what, what is the difference between these two applications? Uh, well, so they're two completely separate applications. The one that's on the desktop, and I don't even know how to launch the one that's the modern style one now. For some reason, when I click here, it launches on the, on the desktop instead of the modern style version. Uh, this illustrates one of the problems is the file associations menu, sometimes b things behave in unpredictable ways. Two browsers, Google Chrome and Internet Explorer, both have both Metro views, modern style views, and desktop views. I click this shortcut. This is a modern style app right here, right? I don't have any idea why that opened instead of going to the one on my desktop. And there's, I click there's, this one, it goes to the one on the desktop. They're separate 
uh, executables. Yeah, separate, ex when, when you set up Chrome or IE, they have a separate set of cookies, separate set of logins, all of your stuff has to go in twice. So if you log into Amazon on your Metro style, the desktop version won't have the password for that, which is really bizarre and weird. That happens in both Chrome and IE, although Chrome works around it better because it syncs all of its settings up to their, uh, uh, to your Google account. Uh, there are a couple of other things that are really weird. For example, the, the settings, when you search, um, it, 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 so when I, googly moogly, when I search, I'm gonna search for Chrome. Uh, so I just get one shortcut for Chrome. The only way I can launch Chrome on the desktop is by clicking the thing that's on my, on my desktop or uh, in, the, in the task bar. So how many of you do Internet Explorer here? If I do Internet Explorer here, I'm gonna get one shortcut. Oop. Internet. One shortcut. And if you click that, it's Clicking that, it takes me to the desktop. I think probably I said at some point the default browser should be the desktop version. Um, and since those settings are saved to SkyDrive now, I don't know how to change it. I, like, I can't find the place to physically change that back. Um, there's no file browser for Metro either, which is really weird. So the only place you can actually browse your hard drive on the computer is right here with the file browser. Um, this puts you in an interesting situation where like if your videos, photos, and music aren't stored in libraries and the appropriate folders on the hard drive, so if you save your music files in C music rather than C users, your username, my music, then what happens is your music folder has, your music app has no way to find it. So and you can't actually set that stuff up. I'm trying to go over here to the right. My music, it says, hey, I don't know where this stuff is. Um, can you open it? Can you find it? No, you have to go into the, you have to actually go into the desktop, go into the file browser, go to music and say, hey, uh, music tools, library tools rather, uh, manage library and add it the old way that you did in Windows 7. So that kind of stuff is really, really bizarre. It's, these are problems that won't appear on a tablet, but they don't make any sense on a, on a PC. And I know that they're kind of outlier cases, but you know, it's all of these things. The thing that after using this, uh, metro modern style UI for a while is it just feels incomplete. It feels like all the things, if this is really for PCs, the things that I expect to be able to do should be accomplishable from inside this interface and they shouldn't, I shouldn't have to go out to the desktop in order to do them. Um, you want to talk about games for a sec? Sure. Because there are some games. Uh, because there's, you know, you'll notice that there's a lot of Xbox branding throughout this. Uh, you can do things like run the Xbox Glass, Smart Glass, uh, demo where you get extra information about what's on your video apps or things like that. That allows you to control the Xbox from your Windows 8 tablet, PC, or laptop. It's a little awkward, but yes. Um, so a lot of Xbox branding, what used to be called Zune is now called Xbox, basically. So Xbox Music, Xbox Video, formerly Zune Music, Zune Video. Um, the games situation, however, where are my games? Here they are. Uh, here, like there's a big list of games and there are gonna be achievements on some of these games. So if you're into achievements, uh, then, then you'll be able to take advantage of that. I'll show you Minesweeper and Solitaire. One other thing is after pressing Windows key and typing to search on the main, on the start screen, I kind of expected to be able to do that in all the apps, but it doesn't, it works here, right? Sweeper, oops, I missed. It doesn't give me uh, fuzzy results, but it, that's only work, that only works in some apps. So if I search, if I do that, the same thing here, I'm gonna get um, search for Google, I don't get anything. I have to actually use the search charm. I feel like that should be really consistent across all of the apps. Um, what you're saying is a lot of inconsistencies in Windows 8. A, a great, great many. Uh, the other thing is if you tap in the wrong place when you're searching, this is right now because this is finance up here, is searching within the app. If I click apps, I can't go back to searching for finance. So the only way to get back is to escape out of here and then start the whole thing again, which is a little bit weird. Hmm. What happens if you have a control F inside the finance set? Will that pop up search? That is a really good question. No. Windows F? Yes. Nope. That's nope, that searches files. for files. Yeah. So, yeah, like this, the search, search is something that normal people use a ton. Uh, there's been a lot of research about that. I, I feel like it's a little lacking in the desktop OS. It's kind of a step back in that regard. Um, let's show Minesweeper and Solitaire real fast. Which is your favorite, Norm? Minesweeper uh, or Minesweeper. Solitaire? It's all Metro. Redesigned Minesweeper. So, Greatest innovation ever. Well, you'd think that, right? But part of the beauty of Minesweeper was it was a little tiny window and you could run it behind your other applications. Yeah, just leave it on the background. Yeah, leave it on the background. When the boss comes up, you alt-tab into the spreadsheet and mm -hmm. boom, you're not in trouble. Hit that boss key. 
Uh, so, yep, it has metro style. Can you put it in a one third window? Uh, that is a good question. I don't know. I have to go to another window first and then make Minesweeper. Where is Minesweeper? There it is. Oh, yeah. Look at me multitasking. There you go. That's your multitasking. And, you know, all the normal shortcuts. I can control click to expand, you know, to, to explode all of the ones that would be. A, it's Minesweeper. Um, you get achievements now. I don't know that I care about that a whole lot, but it is a thing you can do, getting achievements in Minesweeper. So, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much that's the Metro Start screen. It's, um, I don't want to say it's bad, but I'm not a huge. Oh, a couple other things. Semantic Zoom. You can zoom all the way out. If you have a whole bunch of apps installed on the machine, you can see them all from far away. You can zoom in. That's control click, or there's a gesture for it if you're on a trackpad or a tablet. Um, other things, when you plug the, the laptop into a big monitor, it changes the layout of your grid. Of so, the icons in the, the start icons. screen. Yeah, so right now, desktop's lower left, mail's top, right, top left. These icons all look very similar, except for the old school kind of, you know, the, like the pigeon icon, the ones that actually have icons. Any of them that are just text and a color, you have to look at these little guys. So it's a little bit hard to tell which is which, um, especially when you're looking at things like messaging and, and that don't necessarily have anything. It, when you plug in the higher resolution, you get more rows and the layout rearranges itself in unpredictable ways, yeah. which makes it really, makes it kind of a hunting game. to find It's inconvenient when, especially when the way you remember where your icons are, you use your spatial skills, you right. remember that a certain application is going to be in a certain place. Uh, you don't want to have it automatically change when you change resolution. Right. I'm, I'm not a fan of the wall of icons on iOS, but because they all stay in the same place, you, you just learn, oh, okay, Facebook's in the lower left corner of the screen. That's where I click to get that. Um, I, I think that's something they'll probably address, they have to address in the future, but right now it, it's, it's a little bit annoying. And of course you can rearrange stuff, so if I want to move my camera app over here, because You can make icons account. bigger or smaller um, and to show more information or... Some of them you can. Not all of the icons actually have that as, a function, as functionality. Oops. So like Xbox Smart Glass, I should be able to make smaller, and mm -hmm. I can. That's good. And I can make it larger. But, but it you, doesn't show any more information when it, it's larger, uh, because it, there is no NVMe information there. Right well, now. if the Xbox was playing, it may. Mm. Um, I haven't been able to get that to work very well, reliably. A uh, lot of stuff doesn't actually have smaller views. So, uh, yeah, this one gets smaller. I, I don't know. I can't find specifics. But, yeah, some things get smaller, some things don't. There's a little bit of rhyme or reason to that, but it's not apparent to normal people, I think. Um, and that's it. That's, that's the Metro Start screen. I, I'm, I don't dislike this. I don't hate it. I just don't think it's, it's, not, it's not very good is the big problem. I mean, it's not very consistent. It's not very easy to use. It doesn't solve any real problem for the PC. It's inconsistencies become inconveniences because you're forced to look at it and forced to interact with it. Yes. When otherwise you are used to a, the Windows desktop with a capital D uh, in Windows 7. Something that's been around for 15 years and you know how to interact with it at this point, 17 years. Okay, so this is the normal desktop. This is the traditional desktop. Um, yeah, I want to stay in this. Why yeah, can't I stay in this? You can. Like, I, you, if you set up Windows 8 on a desktop PC, you can pin all of the apps that you're going to use mm -hmm. to your start menu. Except that when you log in, bar. you have to look at the start screen or when you search. Yeah, but you, it's, it's right there. Or I think you can even press WinD unless they took that away. WinD will take you to desktop wherever yeah, you are. Yeah, straight to the desktop. So, okay. you know, it, it's, it's a little... The complaint there is a moral complaint about them trying to push their new thing onto your machine, not necessarily a, this is really a pain in the ass. So what, things you also notice is that on the traditional desktop, there's no more Aero Chrome, uh, no more translucencies, transparencies. No. It is all solid block, which is in, in line with the mono style design. Uh, yes, it is in line with, it, with that design. I'm going to change this. Uh, let's see if I get my wallpaper back. I don't know what happened to that. One of the things that it does do that's kind of neat on the on the wallpaper and Chrome front is it changes the color of the Chrome based on the image that you have that you're using as the background. So see, my Chrome was orange before, and now it's blue because now your it's background blue. is blue. And now it's orange, and now it's going to be an earthy color. Oh, that's kind. And now it's going to be a flowery color. Um, and you, when you when your wallpaper changes, that stuff changes automatically, which is pretty cool. I thought. Um, but, but no translucency. They're faking the translucency by picking the color from the wallpaper and putting it into the... Into I'm the fine with that. Uh, and you can, of course, set that manually if you want. If you want to be pink, you can be pink. It's no big deal. Um, alt tab switching, we talked about it a little bit before. It works. It's here. It switches between desktop apps and Metro apps, so it works as you'd expect. And individual instances of programs with on the if desktop. If you have multiple windows. It switches between Windows or Metro apps is, is, the, is the delineation. Um, 
it, again, the corners work here, so you still have the charms menu. You still have the the. Yeah, what are the, the settings Oops. for the charms then? If you go to settings on the desktop, that is a really good question. Settings, it is. It takes you to the control panel, the Windows personalization. But um, of course, you have to still hit PC settings if you want to go into the quote unquote PC the settings. Settings app. Yes. So it's two settings Metro app, control panel, desktop app. Exactly. And the control panel, if you want to look at it, is virtually unchanged. Yeah. So, I mean, I have it on small icons, but you can see the categories. And, and the way to find stuff is just to search what you're looking or for. Or if you want to put your mouse in the bottom left-hand corner and right-click there, you also get a more powerful menu. Yeah. So this, this has access to things like computer management, disk management. Uh, you can do admin command prompt, all that this kind of is stuff. The, this is the menu I'll be using most often. You know, I thought that too after using it, but you hardly ever go in there. The only time I ever go in here is when I need computer management. Or, or which, if you want a command prompt. But the weird thing is, if you look at this, computer management contains like almost all of these things. Device manager. Device manager, disk management, uh, all are subsets of computer management. I, I don't know, it's weird. You can still get to the task manager by right-clicking on the What happens if you search on that? If you right-click and there's a search... So this is the uh, that will just take you to, search. To, the, to the bad search. No way to see that dog again, the Windows um, dog, search dog. So you can just go to File Explorer and search using the, the search here. I, and if you go to C, it'll go through all the unindexed locations and it'll take forever. Um, let's search for JPEGs. It takes a while. It's better to do this and leave this running in the background, though, than to do it in the full screen app where you can't do anything else, I think, at least. Um, and then they've also changed the, uh, the task manager. A little bit for uh, desktop. They changed the, ta the task manager is actually a really good, uh, a really good change. This is the default. It just shows you what's running, and you can end stuff. I want more details, uh, and with that, I can get as much as I want. It gives you overall percentages of use for memory and disk and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the performance graphs are much more granular. You can see how much traffic is going across Wi-Fi. Not much. Um, history of CPU time used by apps. This, it also measures metered data. So one of the big changes about Windows 8 is it knows the difference between, say, your unmetered home internet connection mm -hmm. and your MiFi, um, which will let it know. So you can, so you can prohibit uh, data hoggy apps from using all of your, your data downloads, which is a, a big change, really good. Um, uh, yeah, all this stuff, it's, it's all in here. It's all services. There's a few other places that they've added more functionality to the, to the task manager, but it's not. I mean, basically, if I want to kill Minesweeper, I just go here and hit end task, and it's gone forever, uh, which is good. Um, pin apps to taskbar still works. This is an important thing. So if I want to, uh, well, f one thing that's weird about Metro is there's no universal list of all the applications on the system. So if I want to see everything that's on, I'm going to start typing Chrome, and then I'm going to erase those three things. And this is the list of all the apps that are installed. I couldn't figure out how to get to this other than doing that, where I start typing and stop typing, which is real weird. Um, I use Pigeon on a PC. I can pin that to the taskbar. When I go back to Windows Desktop, it'll be right there, and you can launch it just like normal. So the use case, the way I've been using Windows 8 at home, literally, is to pin everything I use on a regular basis to the taskbar, just like I did with Windows 7, and then launch it from here. You rarely need to go in. We're more accustomed to the taskbar, but really, the taskbar is it doesn't change when you change screen resolutions. It doesn't change when you plug in your external monitor. It's, it's consistent. It's way more consistent yeah. than the Windows Metro uh, modern start screen as a way uh, to use shortcuts. Well, and it patients. still has the good stuff, like the, like the context-sensitive things that developers can manually write for. So, you know, that, that stuff's good. So uh, everything's worked when I've, when I've tried it on Windows 8 that worked on Windows 7. Obviously, the normal stuff that doesn't work is going to be a problem like antivirus and low-level uh, hardware, you know, hardware utilities and things like that. Uh, I had a couple problems with some games that seemed to be more on the developer's end, not following the appropriate specs than, than uh, anything on Windows. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty solid. Like, the performance is really good. The UI is much, much snappier, even than Windows 7 was, especially on high-end hardware. Everything feel, feels really fast. Uh, there's some really good multi-monitor stuff that they've added that we can't actually show you because of the way we capture video. Uh, but needless to say, there's a taskbar on each screen when you have two monitors hooked up. Uh, and you can directly send applications to run on specific screens. You can run a Metro app on one screen. You can run a normal desktop on the other. You can run desktops on both. All of the stuff you'd want to do with multi-monitors is there. If, if it weren't for the fact that it feels like they were forcing people to use the Metro-style start screen mm -hmm. to drive people toward these apps, I don't think anybody would have anything to complain about. 
Um, the fact that this the whole thing feels kind of disjointed is is the biggest issue I have. It does, definitely does not feel like an elegant addition. The Metro style stuff feels pretty tacked on uh, compared to the. And you don't see yourself UI. living in both worlds. I don't think you're going to live in both worlds. I think maybe in two or three years when the hardware is there and there's actually slate tablet PCs that you can plug into a monitor at home, you know that that I can kind of see being a real use case. But until that's that happens, it, there needs it feels to be great, real weird. greater delineation between the traditional desktop and the start screen metro mm -hmm. modern apps. Yeah, the the problem is literally I, I'm not sure whether they said okay, start screen is for this and desktop is for this, or just kind of put things that made sense where they made sense. And when you're building the OS, that probably makes perfect. That stuff makes perfect sense. But when you're using it, it's really confusing. Like, why are there two settings? Why is that stuff not just completely duplicated in both setup settings apps and not shown on devices that it doesn't make sense? And, I, don't, I don't understand And you know what? Stuff. This isn't a problem that Microsoft can't fix. The code is all there. They have the same kernel. They could just, you know, for Windows RT tablets, push start screen, well, push modern apps, and then for laptops and PCs, create a mode where people don't have to see that at all. Yeah, this and is there be nothing to complain about. The thing is, the tablet, the Metro stuff is very clearly designed for tablet style apps. What they what they want is to have a whole bunch of developers on this. When they have six hundred million users at the end of this year running Windows eight, then they'll have a massive installed base that they can that they can lure developers from iOS and Android to build apps for them. I don't know that that's going to happen because I don't think desktop users are going to be very into. And this. right now, as a desktop user, we're finding this very inconvenient, inconsistent. And it's a little bit of a hassle. It's it's yeah. It just it's not bad. It just is not. It doesn't feel right. So uh, that's the Windows 8 Quick Look. We'll we'll be back with a real review after it's released. Um, I think because the the apps situation is as it is, and the driver situation is as it is. As I said, the laptop that we're using that Microsoft provided, the trackpad drivers aren't working right, so you can't do any of the gestures. Um, when we have final hardware and final software, then we'll come back with a more thorough review. But until then, I'm Will. I'm Norm. This is Windows 8. We'll see you guys later. Bye.